It's exciting to see how more than 200 experts, practitioners and scholars from the field of responsible research and innovation have gathered over two days here in the European capital in Brussels to discuss where have we come after almost a decade of research and practice in this field, where are we going, how do we manage that transition towards the next framework program in Horizon Europe and um, also very honestly what worked and what didn't. RRI is about aligning research and innovation with societal needs for research and for, with societal values and we need to make sure that uh, research and innovation is done uh, with the understanding and support of, uh, of the population and that means that we have to include them in, in research and innovation processes so they are heard from the start. We actually want to have a system of research where people, or researchers, share as early as possible with as much as relevant research actors or knowledge actors. Uh, to produce the research. Why are we not actually changing quickly and what are we doing wrong as a group of professionals who care about responsible research and innovation and public engagement? The research that's contributing to that kind of innovation, that kind of futures, needs different kind of responsibility. Critically, with our expectations of impact, economic and social impact, once you start talking about impact, you need to have a conversation about responsible innovation. And I think what RRI does, it starts to provide a framework and definition to help people understand better what is the responsible element of what they're doing and where needed, improve it. We have a responsibility, we, are, we need to engage with uh, and to address societal challenges and in our view that cannot be done um, if we don't think about uh, open science. science and innovation, you're do not doing that for yourself, it is for society in a way. So you've got to do it for them, that is what society is asking you. So that makes the responsibility. That's the main reason why open access is so important, because if you allow people to disseminate their work more freely and more rapidly, this will benefit science. Th those who will benefit are those who are not benefiting from its absence. So in other words, the voices, the communities, the stakeholders, the ideas and perceptions that are not currently being taken into account within science, of which there is a long list. We need to assure, uh, to provide collaborative spaces, like it's actual spaces, for people to sit together at the table and to be able to talk and then when they talk they can co-create, they can co-design. Responsible research and innovation calls a particular community together to think and to address the issues. But also I think there are a host of other methods and practices, many nurture outside higher education that are really powerful if you're thinking about how to create powerful knowledge. This inherent characteristic of us through our knowledge creation changing people's lives fundamentally makes it inherently political. The idea, whether it's like Novotny or others saying that we need to democratize this knowledge creation. This change, in particular this change relating to SWOTS, is really an opportunity then. It's an opportunity uh, to break out of uh, a close community, a bubble, uh, and to bring these experiences into wider actions, to new organisations, to work on new themes uh, where you have uh, knowledge and you have capacities and you have experiences uh, that can be useful. Uh, I'd like to say that I really appreciate the feedback from, from uh, the European Commission and from the European Parliament and so on. Uh, that you took the time to read our recommendations and to comment and to relate it to your context and that's really valuable for us. We should thank all of the participants here and especially the speakers for very good presentations, for good questions and discussions. Mm -hmm.